I'm going to show you how you might go about approaching uh, creating your logo for your uh, assignment. Um, creating a logo and basically drawing out a logo. So here I am in Flash and I'm going to hit uh, create new Flash file, Flash file action script 3.0. And now I have my Flash file. And um, first thing I'm going to do is I, I have a uh, uh, company, my new company is called 14th Story Design, and I don't even have a logo yet. So I thought what I would do is uh, see, show you how I would proceed with this, and then you guys can play with it too. So I'm going to grab my text tool, which is something we haven't really used yet, and I'm going to open up my property window down here at the bottom, kind of, see if I can put this up a little bit. Um, let's see here. Okay, and I'm going to grab a font, and I can look here, and it shows me the fonts right here. And I'm just going to pick one. Let's see here. Well, I'll just grab this one. This one's called Trendy, and I'll get a color, like this color, and I'll type in 14. And then I will take that, highlight it, and I'll go down to my property window and raise the size up. So I have something to work with here. Oh, all the way up to size 80. Okay, notice I'm using my property window, which is down at the bottom. And then once I've got that done, I'll go back to my black arrow tool. So there's um, 14, which I'm going to use for my new company, 14 Story Design. Now, um, I also need the word story. So, over here, and maybe I'll lower this down a little bit, and down to 55, and type story, okay, and you can see what a funny font that is, it's kind of a funny font, and I don't know if that's going to work out well, I don't really like that font too much, so let's see if we can get something else. Let's see here, something a little bit better. Okay, that's fine. Just use that. And what I might do is highlight, get my text tool here. See this text tool? And click right in here and then highlight that. And maybe I will uh, do that lowercase. Okay. So now I go back to my black selection tool up in the upper left hand corner. And so I've got two elements to work with now, two separate text elements. Now what I want to do is, is I want to play with these as vector graphics. Right now they're text and they're text boxes. If I double click on the text, I can go into the text and work with the text. See if I click on this, I can go in here and work on the text, change it to uh, 15 if I wanted. But what I want to do is work with it as a vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to say Modify, Shape, no, Modify, Transform, no, that's not what I want. Modify, Break Apart, that's what I want. Modify, Break Apart, or Control-B on a PC. Okay, and I'll do that. And now I've got two separate pieces of text. Okay, so that's good, especially if you want to break apart a whole sentence in different words. Right? Well, now I'll select that, and I want to break these apart. So modify, break apart again, and now I have no longer is this text. This is now a shape. It's a vector shape. So what can I do with it? Well, right off the bat, I can put my cursor right here, and I could take that, and I could grab it and pull it, so I could basically alter the font and um, create a unique design or a, a unique um, application of uh, for my logo. And I could, of course, do the same thing with um, this word story, but what I'm going to do right now is just leave that normal. Okay? And um, notice since that's in a box, since the text is in a blue box, they don't co-mingle and destroy each other. So that's another thing that's kind of cool. And um, the other thing that I want you to do is, I want you uh, in your um, logo, so my logo could be as easy as, as this, you know, combined with, you know, with that somehow. I could combine these two somehow, maybe with this, I could distort it, 
modify, transform, uh, free transform, and I could uh, stretch it out. Maybe, uh, maybe I could tweak it somehow. Let's see here, right? Something like that. You know, fourteenth story. But the other thing I want you to do is I want you to um, use uh, uh, outlining method on your font. So right here to do that and accomplish that, what I could do is change my stroke to, let's say, uh, yellowish green, get my ink bottle tool, okay, and by the way, you can see I, I collapsed that, so it would be easier for you to see, inkwell tool, and I could um, stroke this. I can change the background color to black by getting my black arrow, clicking on the background, and then changing the background color in the property window to a dark gray, let's say, to get a sense of what my font might look like. Um, on story here, I can't really uh, ink well this text because it hasn't been broke apart yet. So I can't really do that with this text box the way the way it is. So that's that's not as good. But I can take the text, I think, and go to filters and run some filters on it, which could help. So I could put a drop shadow or a glow. So I could go here to glow and put a glow around it up the blur area and change the color. Maybe grab that yellow. Let's see if I can grab that yellow. You know, 14th story, something like that. Uh, inner glow, outer glow, maybe take this down a little bit. And um, I don't, not really digging that. So uh, maybe I won't do that. Yeah, I'll get rid of that glow. But you've got the picture of what I want you to do. And the other thing I wanted you to do was to incorporate somehow um, a gradient. So what I could do is I could work a gradient into my text here. So that's what I'll do right now. I'm going to take this and move this over a little bit so that you can see what I'm going to do. But I'll open up my color swatch here and get a linear gradient. Okay, right now it's black to white. So what I'll do is just get this color picker, let's see here, double click on that and get this blue, okay, and I need this to stay open. And with this one, what I'm going to do is double click on this color picker and get that blue again, but this time take the white up. All right, so now I have a linear gradient and then I can take the paint bucket and click and drag. Let's see here. Maybe I need to select it first. And hold down the shift key and select this. And get my paint bucket. And click and drag. Oh, it's not working here. Uh, let's see here. Nope, that's not. For some reason, it's not letting me work this. Oh, you know why? Here's one of the problems. How come it's not working? Look what I did here. This is a great mistake for you guys to see. Um, I did a linear gradient, but I did it in the stroke, not in the fill. So that's why it's not working. Isn't that terrible? I hate that. So what I have to do is go to the fill and do the whole thing over again. Uh, just click uh, here in the fill and change it to a linear gradient, you see. And now you can see the result showing up in my selected uh, text. So what I could do, though, is grab this and paint bucket like this and change how I want my fill to be distributed. Um, I'm, not, I'm not digging that too much. Just click, click here. Maybe uh, click like that. Click like that. Maybe I don't want it to be that much, only partial. Maybe I want to select both pieces, one, two, and then get my paint bucket and do that. Maybe I want it to be a radial gradient, right? And of course, I'll probably want to swap them, I'm guessing. Okay, that looks good. And let's see here. There we are. And that looks pretty good. Okay. And so, last but not least, I probably want this. Uh, story to change. Maybe the color needs to change right here. 
Maybe I could move that to a yellow, just as an opposite. And I could even put one in front of the other, slightly overlapping. That might be something that would be cool to do. So if I wanted to slightly overlap the two, I could take this, highlight it, and say modify, uh, arrange, send backwards. And that didn't work, so I'll do it again. Modify, arrange, send to back. And that didn't work. So, well, go figure. Um, what I might need to do is to take these guys right now, this two, this right here, highlight it, and then group it together. Modify, group, turn it to an object, and then now I could do it. Take this. You see the one is behind the other, and you could just arrange them however you wanted. Take that like that, that one, modify, arrange, bring to front. Okay, and it's not working that great, but, oh, I double-clicked on it. Whoops, it double-clicked on my group, so i got to go back to scene one. It's another problem when you have grouped objects, sometimes you double-click on them and you go into them by accident, you didn't mean to change them, and you have to click back on scene one. So I hope this helps in uh, designing your uh, your logo um, and, uh, and that you have some fun with it. Uh, come up with a design. It could be your initials. It could be a name of your company, whatever. You might need some more work on it than uh, like I did here is not, I didn't barely just skimming the surface here on this, but uh, it could be a lot of fun.